Hey guys, so today we're looking at the top 10 most expensive Mopars that have ever been sold. I was looking at some old Challenger stuff and I remembered that they had an auction to kick off the launch of the inaugural edition in 2008, and that gave me the idea for this video. I will be going from cheapest to most expensive, and there are all a different variety of Mopars on this list. I may have missed a few, if I did make sure to let me know in the comment section below, and all the dollar values are in US dollars. I've also left out the 2019 auctions, so if you guys do like this video, I could do another one for just the 2019 top sales, where there has been just as crazy an assortment of Mopars sold as well. So let's get started. So as I mentioned, the inaugural edition was sold in 2008 by auction, but we'll get to that in a minute. Also in 2008, from February 12th to 22nd, Dodge held another auction on eBay for the one-off 43rd Dodge Challenger SRT8 built, and after 116 bids, it went for $228,143.43. The number 43 has meaning, as it is linked to legendary NASCAR driver Richard Petty, as he drove Mopar stock cars to victory while wearing number 43. This is also the only Challenger for 2008 to be finished in B5 blue, as the rest were either Hemi orange, bright silver metallic, or brilliant black crystal pearl coat. Petty's vehicles were finished in the same blue as well. Things come full circle because the money went to Victory Junction Gang Camp, which was founded by Richard Petty's son Kyle and his wife Patty in honor of their late son Adam. Their charity is a year-round camp that takes in children from the ages of 7 to 15 who suffer from chronic medical conditions or serious illnesses, and it provides them with life-changing camping experiences. This SRT8 was identical to the rest except for the color and a limited edition number dash plaque, and it was fully loaded as well with options like a sunroof, navigation, and performance tires. The winner also got two VIP passes to the Dodge Challenger 500 NASCAR race at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. So next on the list is that inaugural edition. Dodge got everybody excited with the release of their new era Dodge Challenger in 2008, and just 6,400 were produced for the 2008 model year, all of them SRT8s. 4,300 were pre-ordered on the first day they were announced, but before that, one sold for around 10 times over the MSRP, which was just 37,995. So Dodge auctioned off the very first SRT8 to roll off the production line, and it went for a whopping $400,000 at the Barrett-Jackson auctions, and all the money went to the Not My Kid charity, which helps kids deal with adolescent behavioral health issues. This first car doesn't have anything too different from the others in the year, just a plaque that identifies that car as the first one. The rest of the features are all the same, like the 6.1 liter V8 Hemi with 425 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque, a 5-speed automatic transmission, race-inspired interior, Hemi orange paint with carbon fiber hood stripes, a chrome fuel filler cap, and so much more. Looks like 400k is the price you pay to come first. This next one is another interesting and expensive Mopar, a 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona. This one went up at the Meekum auction in Kissimmee, Florida, and sold for a whopping $900,000. Getting into the numbers, Dodge built just 503 of these Daytonas, but only 70 had the 426 Hemi with 425 horsepower, and just 20 of those had the 4-speed manual transmission. To sweeten the pot even further, this Daytona has just 6,435 miles on it over its 46-year life, and it retains the original numbers-matching drivetrain. It was restored, of course, and has its original T5 copper metallic paint, and restorer Roger Gibson called it, quote, the best example of a 4-speed Hemi Daytona in existence, end quote. And it's also the most expensive one as well. This was the first production car to go over 200 miles per hour, and many will remember its massive rear wing and aerodynamic front nose. As I said, the car was restored way back in 1988, but it didn't need very much. The fenders have never been removed, and the Hemi hasn't needed to be touched as well. The only things replaced were the trunk floor, hood, headliner, and carpeting. So this is really a pristine vehicle. The best part of the whole story is that the winning bidder was actor David Spade, whose character drove a Daytona beater in the 2001 comedy film Joe Dirt. That car had several colors and bumpers falling off, but it did sell for a healthy $18,000 to a fan of the movie in 2002. Looks like Spade wanted the real thing, so he forked over the 900 grand. Spade did an interview where he did say, quote, I don't even know if I will drive this car around. It's too nice for me. I'm just going to wake up every morning and spray it with Armorall, or I'll just drive it to the Beverly Center and stand on the hood, end quote. 
So for the first time on this list, we have a pair of vehicles together, the last ever Dodge Challenger SRT Demon, and the last ever Dodge Viper GTS that were produced, with the two cars teaming up for a combined 1,485 horsepower. At the Barrett-Jackson charity auction on June 23, 2008, these two fetched a final bid of $1 million, all of which got donated to the United Way. This auction was dubbed as the ultimate last chance by Dodge, and many thought that the $1 million was somewhat of a low price. This was also a very rare opportunity, as both the cars were originally intended to go into a museum. The final 2017 Viper GTS rolled off the Connor Avenue assembly plant in Detroit in August of 2017, and those had a starting price tag of $130,000. It has the massive 8.4 liter V10 under the hood, with 645 horsepower and 600 pound-feet of torque. The Viper was killed off for several reasons, like expensive new safety requirements, low sales, and stricter emissions regulations. Dodge tried to style this Viper to match the very first Viper RT10 from 1992, and that's why both this and the Demon were painted in Viper Red. The car also has massive 14-inch wide rear tires, the iconic side exit exhaust, carbon fiber body, black Alcantara leather seats, and the exclusive VIN instrument panel badging. 2018 Demon had a supercharged 6.2 liter V8 engine that produced up to 840 horsepower and 770 pound-feet of torque, once tweaking the car with the Demon crate. It was the last of the 3300 that Dodge built, just for the 2018 model year only, 3000 for the US and 300 for Canada, and it rolled off the Brampton assembly plant in Ontario, Canada, finished in pitch black. It was then given a Viper Red paint job, the only demon to have that distinction, and also a one-of-a-kind VIN instrument panel badge. This particular demon also had the front passenger seat, trunk carpet kit, custom car cover, build sheet, and the demon crate. Originally, these demons carried an $84,995 starting price tag before the crazy markups. Along with the cars, the winning buyer also got lots of memorabilia, including authentication kits for each car, custom build sheets, letters, certification cards, iPads with videos and pictures, and other custom branded items. And that winning buyer was Dodge car collector Dan Snyder, who ended up paying $673 per horsepower. Dan has over 70 cars in his collection, including over 30 Vipers and Hellcats, and two Demons. When you talk muscle cars in this era, the Hellcat nameplate often comes up, and you'll find it once again on my list. Before it was released to the public, the first production Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat was put up at the Barrett-Jackson auction in Las Vegas. The final bid reached $825,000, won by Rick Hendrick, who was a car collector and NASCAR team owner and he also owns several Chevy dealerships. The Engelstad Family Foundation also matched the auction price, so that brought the total up to $1.65 million. All that money went to the Las Vegas Charity Opportunity Village, which is a not-for-profit helping people with intellectual disabilities. And this total ended up breaking the record for the biggest charitable donation auction in Barrett-Jackson history. As I mentioned, this was the first production Hellcat Challenger with VIN 0001. It came with the 6.2 liter supercharged V8 with 707 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque, and Chrysler did add some unique features to it, like striker red paint, which is otherwise only available on the Dodge Vipers, a Hemi orange painted engine cover, special Hellcat badging, specific VIN documentation, and a matching Hemi orange painted presentation box. So inside that box, you get an iPad mini with an authentic Laguna Leather Special Hellcat case. And on that iPad, there's video footage and photos of this specific Hellcat being built at the factory, which is something really cool that you can't get anywhere else. Other memorabilia pieces include a Hellcat lithograph, customized key fob holder, and a birth certificate for the VIN. Next up on the list is this beautiful 1970 Dodge Hemi Challenger RT convertible, which sold for $1.65 million at the Mecham auction in Kissimmee, Florida. 1970 marked the Challenger's entry into the market, and it was only in 1970 that a convertible Challenger was offered. There were just 1,070 of these RT convertibles sold, only 9 of which had the 426 Hemi engine, and just 4 of those had the automatic transmission. So this Challenger is basically one of four. And this specific one had just 1,140 miles on it since it got restored. The exterior has the beautiful FJ5 Sublime paint with black striping, RT lettering, performance hood, hood pins, and RT and 426 Hemi badges. This particular Challenger was loaded up with almost all the options with the A36 performance axle package, 3.55 to 1 sure grip 8 and 3 quarter differential, Rally wheels with F60 by 15 Goodyear polyglass tires, and a dual exhaust system. 
The black interior has front bucket seats, rim blow steering wheel, wood grain console and shifter ball, music master radio with an 8-track player, and power windows. Next up on the list is a 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda convertible, this one selling for $2.25 million at a 2015 Mecham auction in Monterey, California. This is another impressive piece of Mopar history, and the price tag certainly shows that it's something special. 1970 saw a total of 48,860 vehicles built of the Plymouth Barracuda and Cuda versions, but there were just 14 Hemi Cuda convertibles made for the US with the 426 Hemi V8 engine, and only 9 of those had the 3-speed torque flight automatic transmission. So this is a 1 of 9. This car was restored in 2002 by Cummins Restoration in Michigan, and it was originally ordered in triple black with nearly every available option. The original broadcast sheet also shows that it was the personal company lease of executive John Hurlitz, who was one of the major designers of this car, so that definitely adds to the appeal. There's also some other history to the car, as it was in the Brett Torino Hemi Cuda convertible collection at one point, and it has been owned by British muscle car collector Carlos Monteverde and the former chairman of finance at Chrysler, Daryl Davis. As for some of the options, it has a Dana 60 rear end, 4.10 to 1 sure grip differential, 7 blade torque drive fan, 26 inch radiator, A32 super performance axle package, a shaker hood with hood pins, and other features. Inside there are leather bucket seats, Rally instrument cluster and console with wood grain trim, a wood grain steering wheel, power windows, AM radio, and tinted glass. As we approach the top of the list, you'll find lots of Hemi Cuda convertibles. These Hemi-powered Chrysler E-body convertibles were produced only for a limited time, and they became very collectible. So this 1971 example sold for $2.3 million in 2016, after being constructed way back on September 9, 1970. 1971 was the last year for Hemi production, and the sales had fallen to just 16,159 for the Plymouth Barracuda and Cuda. This one is just one of five with the 3-speed automatic transmission and the 425 horsepower 426 Hemi V8 engine. So again, one out of five ever made. This car originally had been special ordered with some very unique options. So the original owner left the graphics off, they had a black top and interior, A36 performance axle package, J45 hood pins, N42 chrome tips, and other chrome moldings. The body looks great with its GW3 snow white paint, and on the inside there's a very rare R26 AM radio with a microphone and cassette recorder, P37 power top, and the basic Barracuda dash layout was also chosen. This vehicle was restored in 2003 by Mopar specialist Julius Stoyer in California, where it took him almost a year to get it back to this condition. Documentation that comes with the car includes the 1977 Kansas title, partial broadcast sheet, original door and carpets, and discovery and restoration photos. In the second spot, there's another beautiful Cuda convertible, this one finished in the eye-popping FY1 Lemon Twist Yellow with black stripes. As we've been over, 1970 saw a total of 48,867 vehicles built of the Plymouth Barracuda and Cuda, but there were just 14 Hemi Cuda convertibles made for the US with the 426 Hemi engine, and only 9 of those with a 3-speed automatic transmission. So that leaves just 5 of them with the 4-speed manual, and that's what this one had. It has a matching numbers 426 Hemi and mostly original sheet metal as well. There's only 27,500 miles on the odometer and it was highly optioned out with many extra options like the shaker hood, A34 super track pack, Dana 60 differential, 26 inch heavy duty radiator, power front disc brakes, and a 7 blade fan. On the inside there's the A01 light group with auxiliary interior lights and turn signals in the fender, the A04 radio group which gets the Music Master AM radio, a power convertible top, Raleigh instrument cluster, front bucket seats with a six-way adjustable driver's seat, wood grain finished center console, and a Hurst pistol grip shifter. As for the rest of the story for this specific car, it was built for export to Canada at the Hamtramck plant in Michigan on October 12, 1969, and it was purchased by a man from British Columbia to give to his daughter as her graduation present. It found its way to the US by 1999, and it was restored in 2003, with the engine being professionally rebuilt. The winning bidder received all the paperwork for the car, including the fender tag breakdown, two partial broadcast sheets, and the receipt for the engine rebuilding. 
The top of this list is yet another Hemi Cuda convertible, this time a 1971 version that sold at the Mecham Auctions in Seattle in 2014. And this one sold for a whopping $3.5 million, becoming the most expensive Chrysler vehicle ever to be sold. Bidding began at $400,000, and within just 8 minutes the price had shot up to the $3.5 million final price tag for one of the most sought after factory muscle cars in the world. Again, by 1971, Plymouth Barracuda and Cuda sales had fallen to 16,159. From that, 6,228 were hardtops and 374 were convertibles. Of that total, there was just 108 Hemi Cuda coupes and 11 Hemi Cuda convertibles, with just 7 of those sold in the US. And to make things even more collectible, only 2 of those 11 convertibles were sold with the 4 speed manual transmission and the Hurst shifter from the factory. So this is just a 1 out of 2. The only other CUDA with the exact same specs no longer runs with the same original engine or transmission, so you can see why this car was so greatly desired. It truly is a 1 of 1 in our world. There's quite a backstory to this vehicle as well. It was first owned by cartoonist Russell Myers, who did the Broom Hilda American newspaper comic strip. He sold it for $250,000. The car was then seized in a drug raid years later in 1999 and sold at a police auction for $405,000. In 2000, a complete restoration was done on the vehicle, again by highly regarded Mopar restorer Julius Stoyer in Los Angeles, and the car got some replacement bodywork and some interior details, but it did remain a numbers matching example with all the original parts and even most of the original sheet metal as well. The factory broadcast sheet also shows that it was built at the Hamtramck Michigan assembly plant. To go over some of the other features, along with the Hearst pistol grip shifter, it has power brakes, bucket seats, painted steelies with dog dish hubcaps, a shaker hood, hood pins, and white letter Goodyear polygas tires. It's also got a Dana 60 rear end with the 4.1 Super Track Pack, a 26 inch radiator, a Rala instrument cluster with 8000 RPM tachometer, 150 mile per hour speedometer, and 3 speed wiper switch. The original B5 bright blue color scheme is there too, with blue paint and matching seats, and the black top. So there you have it, the most expensive Chrysler vehicle ever sold. What would you buy for $3.5 million? So that's the end of this video guys. Thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed it. Which one was your favorite? Let me know down in the comments section below. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content and I'll see you in the next one.